Well, first of all, the governor is planning a press conference today at 3 p.m. at the Department of Public Safety Regional Headquarters in West Dakota. Uh, and I anticipate that he will announce uh, providing authority to DPS to be able to arrest uh, detain migrants uh, and deport them. Uh, there are many concerns that we have in terms of border security. Uh, as you all know right now, we have approximately 7,500 to 8,000 migrants coming across the border. And that is increased. We anticipate that come May, when the federal government does away with Title 42, they've been used to deport migrants uh, immediately back to Mexico or the country of origin, uh, they will have an increase of uh, migrants up to 18, 20,000 a day. Uh, so it means that uh, the Border Patrol will be overwhelmed. And at that time, DPS and the Texas National Guard has to fill in the gaps uh, which are left open by the Border Patrol having to deal and processing all the migrants coming across. Uh, and what's happening is, while migrant families do not get arrested, they turn over to Border Patrol, we have hundreds and hundreds of males uh, coming across through those gaps uh, that are, some are coming looking for work, but some are not. Uh, some are members of the Sarpuche gang at El Salvador. Uh, others have criminal records. Others have been arrested here in the United States before uh, and deported and they're back again. Uh, so it's a real challenge for us. Is, is this the answer? I mean, uh, it's usually the federal government I don't even know if the state has the powers. I don't know about the legality of all this, but do you have any concerns about that, that we're opening ourselves up to lawsuits and maybe even spending more money? Michael, uh, the state of Texas, we are always involved in litigation uh, in federal court, uh, court of appeals, different parts of the state and the United States Supreme Court. For us, as a state, uh, we cannot ignore the problem. Uh, we're going to look the other way. Uh, it's a real serious challenge to our security here in Texas and the United States. The federal government is not doing enough uh, and not putting enough resources along the border to be able to deal uh, with all the migrants coming across. Uh, so we have a responsibility to, uh, and to the citizens of Central Texas to be able to provide security as necessary when laws are broken. I don't know all the legalities about that. I'm sure that it will be immediately contested by the federal government, but we let the courts decide that. So you you back the governor's efforts and using the DPS or National Guard to arrest these people and send them back? It's already happening, Michael. Uh, the National Guard is detaining uh, migrants and turning them over to Border Patrol for, uh, to be sent back to Mexico. Uh, so that's already happening. Uh, it's nothing new. Uh, I think the governor probably will announce a more aggressive uh, approach to try to deal with the migrants coming across, especially as the federal government uh, plans to do away with uh, Title 42. They had allowed uh, the Border Patrol uh, to be able to uh, expel and send migrants back uh, to their countries. Keep in mind that this is costing quite a bit of money to the state of Texas. Uh, we have we have appropriated approximately three point nine billion dollars uh, during the regular session, uh, and uh, just three weeks ago uh, there was a transfer of almost another half a billion dollars to the National Guard, and now uh, the National Guard is telling us they'll run out of money in May, so they'll be asking for more money. So we're looking at four point five billion five billion dollars. That's a lot of money of taxpayer money to be used. Uh, and I'm a member of the Border Security Committee. And part of our responsibility is making sure that that money is being used properly, uh, that we're not wasting resources uh, and have accountability how it's being spent. Uh, I don't think that us spending uh, as much money we're spending now is sustainable. Uh, at some point, the federal government has to step up. It is their responsibility uh, and they need to invest the proper resources to be able to control our border. Okay. Um, what about asylum? I thought that was something that people had the right to if they were trying to enter the United States. We're doing away with the asylum, uh, the right for asylum, uh, when we're just sending these people back. Um, do you agree with that? I mean, is something, something different should happen here? 
Uh, I don't think we're doing away with asylum. Uh, most of the people right now are waiting in, uh, on the other side of the border in Mexico, uh, waiting for asylum uh, hearings. What is happening is uh, that we don't have enough judges, federal judges, uh, immigration judges to hear all the asylum cases. So we have, we had in place, the federal government had in place a catch and release program uh, where it would come and ask for asylum uh, and then they'll give you a legal document to travel anywhere in the United States uh, and give you a court appearance a year, two years, three years down the line. Uh, by that time, the migrant has established roots here in the United States. Uh, and if they don't qualify, they will be deported uh, and create all type of hardships. So it's a very difficult, complex issue uh, that needs to be worked out and addressed by the federal government. What we're doing as a state is doing our best in, re in meeting our responsibility to make sure we protect uh, our residents and citizens here in Texas. Okay, are you going to be at the uh, at the press conference in Westlaco? Right now, I don't. Have, I do not intend to be there. Okay, I didn't know who he had invited or not, or I didn't know who else was going to be there. But okay. Well, I'm sure I. I, could, I, I I'm sure that if I showed up, I would be welcome. Uh, but I did not learn about the press conference until this morning. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's when we learned about it. Anything else about this entire issue? I mean, how much more money can the state spend? Uh, shouldn't we spend some of this money on education? I mean, we're at the bottom of education in every, almost every category, um, and yet we're spending money on, on this. Not that it may not be a, a big issue, but it is an issue. But are we going to start taking away from the education fund and stuff? I mean, how, how much longer can we pay for all this? We have not done that. Education continues to be a priority. We increased funding by $11 billion. We provided additional care funding from the federal government to our public schools. So our public school system uh, has received the proper funding that they requested, including salary increases, uh, in, including uh, making the retirement pension for the teachers uh, actually sound, including the 13 check for retired teachers. So we're not in any way ignoring uh, and taking money away from public education. Okay. Where's all this money coming from? Do we just have a huge war chest of funds just sitting there somewhere? How much do we have and how much more can we continue to take out of wherever we're taking it from? Well, it's coming from the taxpayers, uh, pocketbooks of Texans. What is happening is we are a pay as you go state. We don't write hot checks of the federal government. Uh, we have a very strong economy here in Texas. We are recovering from the pandemic. But in addition to that, uh, there's quite a bit of federal funding that came to the state of Texas uh, through the different uh, programs passed by Congress. Uh, and we have, in addition to that, about 12 plus billion dollars in our rainy day fund. So uh, the economy here in Texas is strong, but that doesn't mean that we should be wasting money. Uh, at some point, we will want the federal government to reimburse, uh, reimburse us. Uh, for the money we have spent uh, on border security doing their job. 